早已。Hi, I'm Mike. Some of you were at my last talk. Um, anybody here not used Koji? <laughs> I think this is more of as a user. Uh, anybody here not actually built packages in Koji before? All right, I didn't figure. But um, so this is about uh, reproducible builds in Koji, and. Um, here in my last talk, the same slide. Uh, I uh, uh, been working on Koji since the beginning, um, and uh, wrote quite a lot of it and maintaining it. I work on the release configuration management team inside of Red Hat, which is a big, fancy, long word that basically means release engineering. Except there's another team called Release Engineering, and it's really confusing. Um, a long, long time ago, I used to work on installer QA, and an even longer time before that, I used to work on Athletics. Um, on Fedora, I'm Mike M, and Red Hat, I'm Mike M, on Freenode, I'm Mike M. Um, other places, I'm not Mike M, so don't just hit random Mike M's on the internet and expect them to be me. You're Mike M23. I'm Mike M and Mike M23. Uh, Mike M didn't log in for, lo didn't log in for, for a year, and I got it. <laughs> I, I successfully sniped a pre note account. So so I am both Mike M and Mike M23. Um, but I'm, for example, I'm not Mike M on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would like to be the guy that's Mike M on Twitter doesn't seem to be using it, but I don't know. Yeah, the guy who has my name on Twitter also just never posts and makes me sad. And there's actually a lot of Mike M's at Red Hat, but I'm the one that's Mike M. Sometimes I get their mail. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, about Koji, you guys know about Koji. Uh, just uh, um, one thing that sometimes people don't realize is that Fedora isn't the only uh, the only project that uses Koji. There are a bunch of others, and that's not even, that's not anywhere near a complete list. That's just some prominent ones. So I pulled this definition off of Wikipedia. Reproducibility in general is more of a term they use for scientific study, but uh, it's the same basic idea, which means that uh, somebody did something and we want to do the same thing. So that's, so in our case, the experiment is a build and they are definitely experiments. Frankenstein experiments sometimes. Um, what goes into a build is more than sometimes people think. People think source code, and yes, source code is very important, but uh, that's not all the information that, that is entered in when you initiate a build. There's also build parameters. Uh, for example, anything you might pass in the mock, any sort of uh, macro definitions or uh, build options that get passed on the command line when you build those, those are part of the ingredients. And the build environment uh, is of the ingredients. So uh, if you build the same source in a different environment, you'll get a different result. As an extreme example, if you use a completely different version of GCC, you will definitely get a different result, uh, if you get a result at all. Uh, good luck with that. <laughs> so Coach has been around for a long time. I think in the last talk I talked, I, I, Initially started development over 10 years ago. Uh, it's been uh, about eight, over eight years since 1.0. And uh, Koji has always been, from day one, concerned with re reproducibility. Uh, and, uh, and Koji's approach has been not so much uh, to focus on uh, what folks are now worrying about, which is by, by reproducibility, but just about uh, reproducing the build environment and logging everything that went into the build in the same way so that you have all that data so if you need to do it again, you can do it again. So just as a review, I think a lot of you know this, but this is just sort of a quick overview of what Koji does when it actually does the build. First, creates a fresh build group every time. Uh, 
that is generated using mock. Uh, of course, when you have mock generate a build root, it's, you've got to give it a repo, a yum repo to use as the, the source for the RPMs, and that is a repo that's generated by Koji. Uh, when Koji generates repo like that, uh, that represents content in the build tag, and not everybody realizes this at a specific point in time, and that's logged. So every repo that uh, that we've ever used in Koji, we have uh, we have a, an event ID logged, so we know which tag content was in that repo. Yes. Kind of random question, just tangential. Uh, are the repo generation no. no. Okay. Which is why we have um, so so mash doesn't make repos. Mash mashes repos. So so you ma the input to mash it is repos. No, input to mash is code. Well, it's a code tag. It takes a code tag, lists everything that's in there, how things have been in place, and then it's great repo. Okay, but. But it can do multiple. But but mash 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 uses create repo. Yes. Yes. So and then it takes the result of the create repo and combines those into a repo. Yes. It well it runs create repo in place. Oh right 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 it, it does the number. Okay. Yes. Uh, no uh, we don't use mash. Okay. Uh, mash did, yeah but Matt, uh, Matt, interestingly mash, mash didn't exist when we wrote Koji. <laughs> mash came about after Forex was merged. And we needed to Ma yeah, mash ping with Punji. And it's kind of like, oh, we need to do this, uh, so mash is a mash is quite a bit slower. I mean, not terribly slower, but a bit slower than just running free group by itself. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it depends. It, it can be really slow. So if it can't have the files, it copies the files in place, mm -hmm. and if you, you pass it a HTTP base, it will then download all the packages and put them into a cache and then have them in place. Um, it so it's it's a bit of a uh, going down a you know rabbit hole here because it's not really pertinent to uh, yeah, building, right. but uh, but no, it, but it's it's an interesting point because I do want people to understand sort of you know a little bit of detail about what happens. And so at the moment, Goji just uses a plain old create repo from a, a single single arch a single arch repo. So no multi thing is going on yeah. in the Goji repos. Which for ninety nine point nine nine percent of builds is all you need. And a couple odd builds you really want a couple odd multi link things in there uh, for various arch bootstrapping. So we have a couple workarounds in that we People do, do use the Koji to, to fix that. Uh, all right. Uh, so, in order to make sure that we could do it again if we had to, Koji tracks a bunch of data. Uh, and uh, and I, I sort of cast this in terms of the ingredient list that we had before. So, in terms of source code, well, we have this for, and also I apologize, I, I, Koji can. Koji can build more things than RPMs, uh, but this talk is really talking about just RPM events, which for Fedora is most of what we care about. Uh, still care about images built, image builds too, but that's a slightly different animal. Um, but for source code, we have had that captured two different ways because every RPM build we save the SRPM, so we have a source that way. Uh, and as long as they've uh, built, the developer has built sanely, we also have the git ref stored in the uh, task info. So uh, in, a, in Koji 2.0, uh, I want to get that into a saner part of the database where it's queryable and more of a first class citizen, but, uh, but still we have it, we have it. But, but it's possible to use generic reference like tab, so it can Right, I said as long as the developer is doing things sanely. <laughs> Uh, another thing I like to have in Koji 2.0 is have the, the ability to have some sort of policy checks implemented on uh, the. Uh, sorry, that was my last talk, but uh, to, to allow people to run their Koji instances to set rules about what sorts of uh, references are allowed, valid or invalid. Uh, I mean, you may want all sorts of rules about that. What is, what is allowed? What is allowed? It's not like you may want 
to say you can only vote from this uh, uh, this get branch for this tag and things like that and that those rules are hard to implement now without writing a very complicated plugin. Uh, so anyway, source code, we got it, check. Uh, one way or the other, we know what the source code was. Build parameters. Uh, well, there aren't uh, generally not too many build parameters per se uh, that go into uh, Koji, uh, a, a Koji build. But, but what, what, we, what there are tend to be captured either uh, somewhere inside the SRPM itself, right? Because if you, you're going to set macros in the SRPM in the spec file, uh, and that's just already there. Uh, some some builds will have a task parameter that tweaks something. And particularly if you look at the way Maven builds work, which again, not find out that Maven builds have lots of different uh, options to get passed in, and those we've captured. Uh, or the build tag itself, for example, uh, just just tags are the way that we usually do them is we build a package inside of build tag that uh, creates a disk tag in the build root, and that's sort of a build parameter that gets thrown in the build. So really, that shoves it more into the build environment. And lastly, we have the build environment. Um, we also have, uh, Koji, Koji also sort of doubles up on this. Um, so bullet point one, when we create the build environment, we have a, we have the repo ID that uh, we used to, to we fed them off to say here build this build root out of here. So we know uh, which tag and which event in time that uh, uh, that we used to generate that repo. So we can look at the history of that of that of the tag contents and say here this is what was in there. Uh, so we can always remake, so we can remake that repo if we need to. At least the data is there. But also, uh, we record all the RPMs to go in the build reading. So we have that log as well. Um, we don't track everything in the world. Uh, there are some things we should probably also track, and we'll probably track some of this in the future. The software outside the build route, uh, we don't have a record of right now. So. The exact version of mock that we use to generate the build root, that could be important. We don't track it. We will in the future. Likewise, Jump, likewise, Koji itself. Um, and for that matter, the running kernel version shouldn't affect the build, theoretically, but it, somehow it does. J. Boss developed a blog about the interfaces between the kernel and the user ad utilities. Yeah, and that's usually what happens. Uh, it, it, it tends to be unidirectional yeah. for the most part. What happens is if you have a kernel that's too old, uh, some 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 packages will fail or build weirdly because they they say, "Oh, is this kernel feature kernel feature around?" No. Well, let's not build this whole other yeah. sub module, yeah. <laughs> even though. When the kernel went to 3.0, mm -hmm. it worked Python and a whole bunch of software that um, went and built on a 3.0 system because the, the software was. It was checked that the kernel uh, 2.2 or 2.6 or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was checking version, but it was assuming that there would, that would be a 3. <laughs> and so it failed and said this kernel is not. Good enough. Wow. But it seems to be an API bridge when the kernel goes in and out of that fault. The assumption has to have a kernel. So, suffice to say, we could do a better job if we will. So, uh, let's talk about Debian. Um, any Debian fans in the house? <laughs> it's okay. I won't judge. Um, so who's familiar with the Debian Reproducible Builds project? So uh, these guys are doing uh, great work. And since some of you aren't familiar with I'll, I'll explain it briefly. Uh, Debian Reproducible Builds project ha is, has a very laudable goal. They want, they want for every package in Debian, which is a lot, to be uh, byte for byte rebuildable from source. Uh, and 
it's going to be a while. <laughs> but, uh, and the reason that they want byte for byte is they want independent verification. They want uh, people to have confidence that the code that they're, that the, the binaries that they're shipping do in fact correspond to the code that they claim that it does. And really, uh, from their perspective, the, the, the most direct way to prove that is to rebuild it again and get the same bytes. So, uh, in order to achieve that, they've been working, uh, you can read it, read about it in their project, there's two major areas of work, as I see it, that they've done. One is that they've built a new tool chain that, uh, that records their build environment in, uh, and, and also a tool chain that allows them to, to replicate that. Um, and two, they've been fixing individual packages on a case-by-case -case basis when they find problems. So, um, I'd like to give a, a, a fun example. In edit, the text editor from the 1990s, oh, when you go to help it out, it says built on, on this date and time. Yes, so, uh, so individual packages, uh, so, so we talked about recording the build environment, and Koji's been doing this since day one. Uh, they have <coughs> these build info files that they write, which contain very similar data to what Koji is tracking, uh, including some but not all of the other stuff that I said that we should be tracking but aren't yeah. yet. Um, and in an ideal world, if you have the same inputs, the same source, and the same build parameters, and the same build environment, and you run the build again, why shouldn't you get the same exact same output out? Well, you don't in a lot of cases, and they found a bunch of reasons why. It, it's, it boils down to, there's a lot of, there's a long list on their project website, but it boils down to two major groups. One is non-determinism, and, and you're right, timestamps. Timestamps are a big one. Timestamps everywhere. Time stamp, you need to find every executable. Yeah, they put timestamps, they put timestamps in in string, you know, in, in the binaries, and in, in what? In documents. Yeah, in documents, in, yeah, uh, help strings, anything, any, any, uh, 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 and, and randomness. Some builds uh, either have, some, some builds use a number generator to decide something or other. There was, uh, I think they talked about uh, one build that was using fortune. <laughs> <laughs> to generate some <laughs> to generate some documentation at build time. Uh, uh, so when they find cases like this, they go in and they patch the build. Uh, they, and they usually patch it upstream. Uh, and then there are other environmental factors, so where, where a build is pulling in something from the environment that really should not. It shouldn't it shouldn't be pulling in a particular UID or GID from the build environment, which is probably not an invariant number every time you make the build environment. It shouldn't be pulling the exact running kernel version down to the very last bit and sticking that in, 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 a, in a file or a string, because that's also, shouldn't matter to that fine granularity. You definitely don't need to stick it in some comment somewhere. And so they're going through and they're uh, fixing it. There's a long list, if you look on that, um, if a package were to you know, save its own build into a format in like some arbitrary file, do you just exclude that, exclude that from the file from the package? The package were to what? If a package were to have its own like equivalent build info, like, hey, I'm just built on this system, you know, uh, and stores in a separate file that you don't need, do you just exclude it from, uh, from the package? Oh! Uh well, yeah, I guess in terms of packaging, yeah. sure, you could possibly, yeah, you could possibly fix that at the, at the, at the spec level, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, right, without, without. I don't think you have a package to build into. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if they're all made, we would make. I mean, like, an application's own version of both. We would maybe want to keep it as a log file to yeah. build, but we don't yeah. want to do that. So this is from the Debian website, and, uh, and you can see a very long list I know you can't read this, so I'll make it a little bigger. It's a very long list of different types of issues that they have. Uh, Timestamps, 
from C++ macros and the number of uh, affected packages different through the UMass. Uh, this goes on for a very long time, and I don't think it's even timestamps, 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 <laughs> timestamps, randomness, random, 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 bad, bad, bad coders. All right. <laughs> So, personally, I'm not a huge Debian fan. It's always seemed like a weird alien thing to me. But these guys are doing an awesome job. They, they really are. Uh, they're, it's, a, it's a Herculean task. There's so many packages out there, and there's so much non-determinism. And they have a pretty graph of their progress. And they've, they've made a lot of progress, but it's really tapering. I think it's going to take them a long time to get the long tail. Uh, but the work, the, a lot of the work they're doing, they're fixing upstream. So we'll get it too, eventually. So uh, do you communicate with them? Because they did communicate with me asking about what they were doing. Uh, I, I've been in touch with them a little bit. I really need to get back in touch with them and see what I can do. Trick is I don't, I mean, and I'll get to this later, I don't, I don't really have the time right now to lead a reproducible builds initiative. <laughs> uh, but, and, and there's the question of to what extent do we have the same motivations as Debian? Um, so let's, anyway, back to Koji. So as I said, Koji's been tracking build environments since day one, but we have, sort of have different goals. When when I put these features in the Koji, I wasn't thinking, let's, let's publish this data so that people can replicate our builds. I was writing this for the internal Red Hat build system. That was not the thing. No, uh, this was about reproducing failures because our previous build system did not have any, any level of reproducibility. And it was a terrible situation to be in because if something went wrong and you needed to rebuild it, you could introduce a bug uh, from a from a changing build environment when you rebuilt a, with a simple one-line patch and not have any idea why. Uh, or you could have a failure that you couldn't explain, but then you couldn't replicate it and understand it. What is the that we have that we build? Builder was updated while the kernel build was going on. Quite possibly. And then reset something and then of course the built kernel did not work. Would not surprise me in the slightest. When when I first started working with the CentOS guys, uh, uh, they had uh, they had reverse engineered all this uh, all this information about the different Beehive builders because Beehive has had it build roots. Beehive had a build root that lived for months, years, and just kept getting package updates in it. So the same build route is sort of like, imagine if you'd had like a, uh, imagine if you had a laptop that you had started with Fedora 1 and just kept yum updating <laughs> without doing any of that fixing up the broken packages at every step all the way up to, tw to 22. What kind of install environment would you have? Well, you'd have something like a Beehive build root. <laughs> um, so so when, when, when we wrote Koji, we, were very, we, we really wanted to have some sanity here. So that's what we were going for was sanity and also the ability to reproduce failures. Um, and since we drank all this stuff, it's one really nice, uh, nice thing about it is if you do discover that, say, there was a bug in glibc version XYZ, and it could affect things that were built with that version of glibc. You can actually go in the database and figure out exactly which things we built with that version of glibc that we might need to look at and read them. Whereas if you did the, tried that with the, with the previous system, you would just have to exhaustively examine every binary in the distro to figure out if they were broken. So that's sort of why we have the reproducibility that we have in Koji. And by the way, a, a couple people have asked questions, but please ask questions if uh, you have them. 
Um, this is a, just a little bit of a duplicate, I think, slide uh, from before. Just a reminder for the coach build routes we have. Uh, the input is coming, each build task is given a source code and a target. Source code target, those are the two things you provide. Uh, when Koji does the build, it's going to look at that, uh, look at the build tag for that target, uh, get the current repo, uh, which references a particular point in time, generate a mock, mock build route, run mock build, and we have the huge data, the, the long data trail that we talked about before. Question. Yeah. So it, it says that the build reference for each RPM and it references a repo ID. Um, is there is there a way to like reach back in time and do the build again in that build group with that repo in the state that it was in at that point in time versus all of the updates that we it's, had? The it's not um, it's not that accessible, but I have. Not a demo because I'm not doing a live demo, uh, but I have uh, I have pictures of doing exactly that. Okay, cool. So it, it, it is possible, but it's not allowed for ordinary uh, right mechanism or not allowing even scratch builds from particular repo ID. It is in the API mode, but it's not uh, right. Allowed it's in so policy. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So so I'll, I'll get to that. So yes, uh, you can do this. So let's. Uh, We'll get too far. Uh, let's uh, j just uh, places you would look to get the to get this reproducibility data that we have in Koji. Uh, for the task parameters, those come from the task info. You can get that on the command line, get in the web UI. You can get it in the API. Build root contents. I've got the list build root command. Uh, there's a, there's also web UI, also API, because there's nothing in the web UI or the CLI that you can't do with the API. Um, and the yum repo, uh, for a recent build, the yum repo may still be there. So if you if if the build happened earlier today, you can probably just reference that repo and do the build again. Uh, for older builds, we still have the data, and yes, Koji can remake that repo, and I'll show you how. Unfortunately, it's. Uh, uh, privileged action, so you, you don't have to be an admin to do that part, but you do have to have the repo part, which we generally don't recommend handing out really, you know, really. But uh, I think anyone actually has the repo permission other than Koji. Yeah. So anyone that can run Koji rig and repo can also generate repository for all the repo ID. Yeah. That part. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but before we get into that, let's talk about uh, local mock um, because I know uh, we have the. Uh, fed package command that does mock build, but um, I think the default, by default, that references the uh, the the main release the repos. Well, it, it, it references the latest. Post code you mock config, but it just gets the latest. Okay, maybe with the option, I think, but by default, I think it actually references like yeah, the, uh, the, the, default, the distro distro repos. Yes, exactly. But there is uh, also a code repo defined there. Um, which is not the same repo, but Koji is F24 build, but there is Rafai, and it's, it's disabled by default, but with command line option, it's possible to enable it. There's an option for package where you can do the package mock build, and it uses the... Um, the latest it, 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 yeah, it, yeah, it, it writes out mock config from Koji and uses the latest repo. Right, uses the latest, but if you want to actually use a specific repo, say one that's not the latest, but one that was the latest four hours ago and is still around. Uh, so the, the Koji mock config command is a bit of a Swiss Army knife for, for writing mock configs. Uh, and uh, this, is a, this is an example that, that, I, that I ran, ran through last night. Uh, so I went and uh, looked at grabbed a, a recent successful build, in this case it was AST. I grabbed the, uh, the task ID for, for, for its x, x86-64 build arch task, and I said, Koji, Koji, make a mock config from that task ID. And 
means they don't. And that's all that task that that, 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 that command does. It says, make the same mock config that, that this task used. And then I have to get the source RPM, and move the mock config somewhere where I can use it, and uh, rerun mock. So uh, built to exceed, yes. Is it byte for byte? Not in this case. So I, I should emphasize that's not because of using mock this way. That's because uh, I think that's a packaging thing. So it's going to vary by package. Uh, so this is sort of DIY replicate on your own system. You can get the, as long as the repo is still around, you can reference it. Um, and then in the next example, you see how you can, with the right privs, force Koji to remake the repo. In the future, I really want to make uh, like a, uh, a client side command that would make make the repo locally, but referencing the content in Koji. So you could remake the original repo locally and use it, and then you wouldn't have to have any privileges in Koji, because you'd just be pulling the packages out. Uh, and the, we have all the data, so it's totally doable. Uh, no privileges required to do this. Now, can we make Koji do it? And the answer is yes, but it does require some privileges. So the approach we take is first we get we gotta extract the parameters that we need from the original build, source URL, build tag, and the Koji event ID from that build tag, or the, the Koji event ID from the, the repo that was used. Uh, step two, get Koji to replicate the repo. Step three, rebuild using the replicator repo. That also is a privileged command, uh, privileged option. It's just a dash dash repo ID option to the, to the build command, but if you don't have uh, the right privileges, it will error and tell you that you're not allowed to do that. Uh, that actually is something we can adjust in the current code, depending on whether you want people in the yeah. OG instance to be able to do that. But is there any reason for not following ordinary users? But I think the um, Maybe because of garbage yeah. collection, the repos well, are used and they can well, be So th there's there's two issues. Do you want to support it? Do you want your users to complain to you when it doesn't work? Uh, and do you want do you want your developers to be able to build from to really be able to build from last week's uh, version of the repo? For your product, that it may be important that they don't do that. Yeah, but in some cases it's useful to do that. For example, right. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Or yeah. Okay. So it, it, this is some, that that much you can adjust. Uh, the Koji admin can set policy. Or uh, if even to like you wait for some package to appear in the repository, but by the time you submit, if someone attacked it and the new repository. And another reason that you might not want everybody to do this is that uh, it does put a little load on the system. Re uh, repo jobs are not, um, they're not free. And in particular, I think these repo jobs, we can do a better job of that, but I think these repo jobs tend to be a little heavier than most because they don't, they don't make as much use of uh, dash yeah. yeah, I think they end up making, making it from scratch. I'm not sure about that. We should probably fix that. Uh, but that's our approach, and so, like I said, no, no live demos. <laughs> but uh, so I, I did a few tries. I I, 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 I ran this one last night. So here's UTF UTF8 proc. Uh, that's that's a piece of the build info page, just to show you where you can pull the data from. Uh, for the build info page. I'm mainly looking to go straight to the task page. So that's the link down there. Uh, you could do all this in the API too. Um, for the build task, again, screenshot. Uh, here's where we get the source URL. That's one of the, the three ingredients that we need. So. You would just, you just cut and paste that. There are other ways to get at it. You can get it at 
in the API. I actually have this um, semi-automated in a really hackish script <laughs> that will rerun a, a, a build task ID. Yeah. Uh, and then we dive down from the build task to the build arch task to get a little bit more data, a few other pieces of data. Uh, we need um, the, the build tag, which we could have guessed from the target other ways, but it's right here, so we'll pull build tag is at 24 build. Uh, and here, repo ID. That, was, that repo ID was chosen by the build task and passed to each of the build arch tasks, so each build arch task uses the same repo ID. Uh, so we have the repo ID, but that's not quite what we need. What we really need is that event ID that is associated with the repo ID. And to get that, I had to go to the API, I'm sorry. <laughs> so that's sort of low level stuff and the web UI doesn't really expose it, but the uh, call the repo, repo info call for that repo ID gives us the event ID and I highlighted it in red. So the code you call command lets you access the API. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's 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 a really handy shortcut for when you're feeling lazy. All right. Uh, <laughs> there's also uh, look at the help on that. You can uh, uh, the the default behavior is to sort of do this weird auto conversion of your bash args to. Uh, to XMLC args, so if it looks like an integer, it turns it into an integer. If it looks if it looks like it's a boolean, true, false, yes, no, it turns it into a boolean. I think uh, if it uh, looks like a looks like none, if you write none, it turns it into a none. And other than that, it says string. Yeah. If you want to pass a list or a dictionary, then uh, there's a dash dash Python option sure. where you can. Uh, embed Python expressions on the command line and they get, uh, get parsed with AST literally val if you have AST installed. If you have, if you have a new enough Python to have AST. Um, so it's a fun little command, complete side note. But uh, uh, yeah, sometimes you just don't want to fire up the Python shell and type all the magic session setup and just run Koji. So let's do this. We have all the data. So um, not a lot of commands. So here, here I'm using call again because I could I can't just do regen repo because I need to pass in that event ID arg. I need to say regenerate this, make this repo for this build tag build tag at that event that we pulled from the last slide. So interesting, when you do, when you um, regenerate a repo in Koji at a specific event, it's not current. Uh, when Koji generates that repo, it will not mark it latest, which is very important because I don't, I don't want to accidentally affect somebody's build in a weird way by having this. Uh, not current repo suddenly become, become the current one. Oh wow, I'm almost out of time. Yeah. Time flies, we have fun. All right, so uh, watch that task so that so that we wait for it, wait for it to be done, complete successfully. Uh, we will need the result of that task to get the new repo ID that we just created, which is that first one. And the, the other other thing that uh, that particular task returns is the event is the event ID, which is the same one we passed it. Uh, then we say Koji build. I added an await and the arch override because I didn't want to and the scratch. I didn't want to do a real build and I didn't want to uh, waste any arm time. But uh, same source URL and that repo, dash dash repo ID equals the repo ID above. So we're rebuilding the same source from the re using the repo we just, we just regenerated. Watch that task and wait for it to finish. And it completes. And in the end, 
in this case, identical. Well, uh, so, so after it finished, I did a download build of the original and, and the, the new download task we just added in 110 uh, of, the, uh, of the scratch build. And I'm, I'm cheating here. I'm doing RPM dip dash IT because one thing that we have in RPM is timestamps. <laughs> in the RPM header itself, there's lots of timestamps. So even if you make exactly the same files in your RPM, you will have them have different timestamps in the CPIO archive in the RPM. So when you do the RPM diff, you have to ignore that. That's, that's what the IT does, is it ignores those timestamps. But when you compare those two RPMs, I put the extra dollar sign, no output. So in this case, we get byte for byte replication. So it is possible, and we do track the data. And um, yeah, so hopefully that wasn't too tedious. Uh, it sort of shows what the data is and how you might use it. Uh, so open questions. Um, I have no idea how much of Fedora would replicate byte for byte if we did this for everything. Um, I, we could find out, but <laughs> that's just not, not something I have enough time right now to, to, to dive into. Um, do we have failure cases beyond what Debian is finding? Are there things that, uh, that, that uh, uh, yeah, are there cases where Debian can get a byte for byte from the same source and we can't? Yeah, don't, don't know. there is a case for uh, uh, architect builder of Architecture builder, some pack novel packages can be built on either architecture, but when built on different architectures, you can get different results. Right. We do actually know that though, because we, 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 we do know what architecture on the large packages are built on, because we have that in the information. Yeah, but then if you use R override, Built on right, right, right. We would have, we would, we would, you, architecture. you're right. We would have a hard time for, we would have a hard time forcing that. But we have the data. We just don't have the, we don't have the, we don't have the tools. But we don't quite have the tools. Um, and last, is there interest in Fedora in a Fedora reproducibility effort? Uh, I don't know. If any of you are interested in this, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to point you at scripts and tools and data and if uh, somebody wants to uh, to uh, um, take point on this that would be awesome but at the same time I think we have somewhat different goals than Debian so we may or may not really need to do this but I think Debian is coming from behind us and uh, some of the goals that they ship are going on developer workstations. Right yeah that was shocking to me when I went to their talk. Uh, yeah, like that you do your the build and your yeah. arch, you upload yeah. it, and then it builds to the other arches, but they ship the build and you've done on your arch. Yeah. yeah, in a sense, the Debian reproducibility, uh, a lot of what Debian has been doing is, is, is catch up because they weren't tracking any of this data before and they weren't even, and they weren't using any kind of same build environments. Like I said, the, I think even still, at least when I saw them, saw, saw their talk at, at Fosdem, they, Still have processes in place. They still have processes in place where a developer could build on their local system and, and upload actually, it to Debian, and that was something that would ship. Actually, they did that for uh, the scripting purpose, uh, for example, for Oscar compiler, we got an Oscar, and uh, when someone decides to pop Debian on the PSD or the Power Server or whatever, uh, they still need to keep that possibility. To, to, so to, to their credit, the, the Debian guys that are behind this effort, they hate that and they want to get rid of it, yeah. <laughs> rightly so. Yeah, so that's... a good job. Yeah. So I uh, sort of ran out of time for Q&A, but if anybody wants to catch me later, I'm happy to, to answer questions. And thank you. Oh, perfect. Okay. I would just like to point out that uh, you know.